Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the CT abdomen pelvis. Uh, this is a very commonly ordered exam in both the acute uh, and kind of more outpatient setting for any basically any sort of intra-abdominal pelvic pathology. Um, and as usual, we're going to understand what's going on with the patient by taking a look at the indication histories and any sort of prior exams, which could include CT, MRI, X-ray, ultrasound of the abdomen or pelvis, taking a look then at the localizers for any anatomy not captured, especially on the uh, cross-sectional images. And then like the general approach that I use is a quick look at instantly uh, imaged areas of the lower chest, including the mediastinum heart, lower lungs, vasculature, and then ultimately moving to the solid organs in the upper abdomen into the G, uh, GI system, gastrointestinal, the uh, GU or genital urinal system, other pelvic structures, taking a look at vessels, looking at, look at lymph nodes, the peritoneum potential spaces, and then ultimately looking at everything else outside the osseous structures, the soft tissues and muscular structures that surround uh, the abdomen pelvis. Okay, so to start, uh, once we've gotten a sense of what's going on with the patient, it's a good to it's a good practice to take a look at the localizers, especially the upper aspects and lower aspects, which we, we may not see on the cross-sectional images. All right, especially any sort of mass lesions or any sort of um, kind of obvious abnormality, gross abnormality at those regions, okay? And then starting off, the search pattern that I like to use is to first take a look at the lower chest. Um, frequently, people just look at the lung bases for abnormal nodules, consolidation, ground glass opacity, but it's also very good practice um, on every study to look at the um, pulmonary arterial uh, vasculature as you see it, especially on multiple projections, as you may uh, incidentally see pulmonary emboli or other sort of vascular pathology there. Um, you're going to see much of the heart um, in some studies, mediastinum, just make sure we're not missing any sort of um, uh, gross pathology in that area. Um, this also includes kind of the, you know, other areas, the uh, esophagus and more kind of more posterior um, aspects of the mediastinum. Okay. And once we've taken a look at the lower chest, we can get into the abdomen and pelvic structures. Usually I like to start with the liver, which you, it's a good practice to window pretty tightly. And we like to use thick sections, usually around five um, millimeters to take at take a look at the liver parenchyma, looking for abnormal attenuation, mass lesions, anything like that, contour abnormality, irregularity, difference in size of the lobes, any sort of post-surgical changes. Um, we're going to make sure that we take a look at all of the liver parenchyma so we can wrap all the way around over here as well. Um, and you have to note also that the various aspects of the uh, hepatic vasculature, the veins, the portal, uh, let's see, what are the, the hepatic veins, portal veins, and then um, and then the uh, hepatic arterial vasculature, which is a little smaller, and we can see that running through the port hepatis, um, and then kind of as smaller structures, okay? And we're going to take a look at the liver, or as far down as uh, kind of the most inferior aspect, and look, again, looking for any sort of um, interparenchymal sort of abnormalities. Next thing is to look at the gallbladder and try and follow that out, looking for stones, any sort of abnormal int um, intraluminal abnormality, sludge layering things, um, wall thickening, pericolcystic fluid, um, inflammatory changes surrounding the gallbladder fossa. We're going to follow that down um, into the cystic duct, the region of the cystic duct, and then um, as we can into the common bile duct, which frequently uh, Sometimes we can see better on other, other sections, but we see it here making its way uh, into the region of the pancreas and joining up the pancreatic duct um, to empty out into the duodenum. All right, so having followed the kind of uh, biliary tract, we're going to then take a look at the uh, pancreas as we see it's kind of wrapping around here, this uh, structure, and we're, we're looking for focal mass lesions, hypodensity, cystic structures. We're looking for... Uh, pancreatic, intrapancreatic, peripancreatic fluid collections, inflammatory change, we're going to follow that around to the tail and just look carefully and also noting that there's kind of a duct there if that's if that, if that happens to be dilated, okay? So um, they're covering the pancreas, then coming over and taking a look at the spleen, um, looking for, you know, internal uh, lesions, market enlargement of the spleen, abnormal position, or... Um, 
any sort of outer malleys affecting the uh, kind of splenic hilum and other vasculature that's close to there. And then ultimately then moving down over to the adrenal glands, which you see as these kind of Y-shaped structures, looking for nodularity, mass lesions, collections in that area, and then moving to the kidneys, and then taking a look again for normal thickness of the cortex, cystic structures, mass lesions, any heterogeneous attenuation, um, and then kind of looking in the like renal hilum um, at the uh, and then at the uh, collecting systems as they go out into the renal pelvis and the upper aspects of the ureters bilaterally. We're going to look for, by the way, um, kind of abnormal um, kind of filling of you know, contrast appearance, like such as like a delayed nephrogram comparing side to side. We're going to look for uh, urethral thickening, enhancement, nodularity. Um, if we happen to see contrast in the collecting system, any filling defects, following the ureters down bilaterally. And we're just going to do this very quickly. And I won't trace it very carefully, but all the way, all down to the ureteral vesicular junction at the bladder, taking a quick first look at the bladder um, to just cover the kidneys, ureters, and bladder like the urinary system. Okay. Um, that covers the upper abdominal solid, kind of solid organs. Um, next, I'll take a look at frequently, I will move and then again, taking another quick look at the bladder, but then ultimately moving to the GI system. All right. And then we're going to see the lower uh, thoracic esophagus into the GE junction, looking at the uh, stomach. And I, I like to particularly do the GI system on the coronal images, um, looking for abnormal wall thickening, inflammation and obstruction. Um, and then in the stomach, following that around down into the duodenum, you know, uh, first and second part into the part that kind of crosses midline and then uh, third and fourth up here. And then ultimately when we reach the uh, jejunum and ileum or kind of like the, these kind of other small bowel loops, it's, it can be more, more useful to kind of follow them. Uh, I mean, you can follow um, the actual lumen or individual bowel loops, um, kind of individually as far as you can, but it can be useful to follow them kind of on, on mass or as like large, uh, kind of taking a look at the larger anatomy, looking for adjacent lesions, for any interluminal lesions, for bowel wall thickening, for you know, diverticula, any sort of um, kind of pathology affecting those small bowel loops and following them from the, kind of the, their, their distribution in the left upper quadrant down into the mid and lower abdomen. And then you're gonna note that the kind of ileum, uh, you know, uh, down here is ultimately gonna at, you know, enter the cecum with the ileocecal valve. Frequently, there's going to be an area of, of kind of of uh, kind of fat density at that junction. Uh, frequently, the appendix will come off the cecum inferiorly to the uh, ileocecal uh, junction. In this particular patient, if we kind of scroll further back, and again, I, I particularly like the coronals for looking at the GI tract. You can see that the appendix arises posteriorly, um, then courses kind of a, almost like a retrocecal. Um, uh, distribution, uh, you know, posteriorly in this patient, this, this appendix is normal. You want to check the, the appendix on every patient as best you can see it. And then we're going to follow the colon around from its ascending portion to the transverse portion, um, you know, hepatic flexure over to the uh, splenic flexure all the way down here, um, and then into the sigmoid and then the rectosigmoid um, rectal vault and all the way down to the anus. Okay. And all, all along this line, uh, uh, while we're evaluating the GI uh, tract, we're looking for abnormal dilatation, a transition point, if there is uh, concern for obstruction, you know, particularly at the colon, but also at the small bowel, to, you know, uh, though much less commonly, we're going to look for diverticula, looking for inflammation, uh, particularly around the appendix as well in the appropriate setting. Um, and it's very, you know, uh, every once in a while, we will see, you know, uh, mass lesions interluminally. Um, you want to you be careful, especially in the colon, to look for that on every study. Um, you, can see, you, you can, you know, uncommonly see mass lesions adjacent to the bowel or implants on the bowel. So we want to be careful to be looking for those, um, in, you know, in this complex anatomy. Uh, even though I like to particularly use the coronals, um, I will also use um, the axials and then occasionally the sagittals to problem solve around that, particularly kind of like, for example, for the uh, rectosigmoid looking at the sagittals. All right. And having covered uh, the, uh, GI the GI tract, I just, I particularly also look, like to look at, you know, again, the bladder, pelvic structures, the uh, you know, reproductive organs, um, and then kind of pelvic contents on the sagittal. You know, this can kind of lay out the anatomy well, especially in the anterior posterior dimension. And, and you can also look at the surrounding flat, paint, flat planes to make sure that those are well-preserved.
Okay, and now having covered the solid organs, the kind of vis um, uh, viscous, uh, those or rather the hollow organs, the GU, GI tract, pelvic structures. Um, ultimately, then we're going to look at the vessels. You have to remember that that includes the systemic as well as the portal and uh, cable system. So we're going to follow the aorta down. You can kind of see you want, you're, you're looking for abdominal dilatation, aneurysmal dilatation, significant atherosclerotic plaque, calcification, uh, saccular aneurysms. We're going to follow the aorta down into the uh, iliac systems and those into the uh, as they turn into you know the femoral vessels at the inferior aspect the studies uh, of the study you can see kind of the branching pattern um, and you know certain aspects of the celiac trunk and, and SMA are best demonstrated on the sagittals and sometimes you can you know in the appropriate setting you can look specifically for the IMA as it comes off the aorta there as well um, and then again following out into the uh, iliofemoral systems bilaterally on the arterial side you can also take a look at you know the um, uh, sometimes rarely you'll, you'll or not not entirely rarely, but sometimes uncommonly you'll see uh, abnormalities by the thrombi of the uh, the venous vasculature as it returns from the th uh, iliofemoral systems into the cava. Okay, and then you have to also note that you're going to see the portal system as it enters the liver. You're going to see kind of like the splenic vein over here and if you're mesenteric vein, you and, and you know you want to make sure that you are at least taking a quick look at the vasculature um, and to make sure there's no abnormality. And sometimes they will see complications within the vasculature secondary to primarily uh, visceral disease, okay? And having taken a look at the vasculature, that's also a good time to stop and, and think about looking at lymph node stations at the retroperitoneum, you know, along the vasculature, along the aorta, along the uh, cava, down into the ili uh, near the iliac vessels, and then down into the kind of the um, inguinal areas and I like to do that both on the coronals as well as following on the uh, axials. And you have to remember, you can see some areas or, um, in the lower chest, retrocural, you know, retroperitoneal, and then along the vessels anteriorly and then posteriorly, perirectal as well. And you have to remember that you can see lymph nodes in the mesentery. Um, and this is kind of a good time as well to make sure that you're looking at the mesentery, you're looking at the peritoneum. Um, uh, to look for abnormal nodularity, we're looking for collections free, you know, free air, which we can see kind of on lung windows, uh, free fluid, um, and then especially if in, in in the setting of malignancy, we're going to look along the edges of all of the kind of um, you know major uh, abdominal organs for abnormal nodularity. You know, I like to look around the liver, spleen, basically around the whole you know the uh the whole walls of the peritoneal cavity and then especially along the surfaces more inferiorly which is you know if you're going to have any sort of like uh you know in, in, in settings of cancer um you know peritoneal implants things like that we have to look very carefully in those sort of settings look for the preservation of these fat planes in the setting of uh inflammatory processes as well okay so we're looking um the peritoneum and we've, we've looked at the lymph node stations, we'll look at the peritoneum, and then finally, once we finish that, we're gonna move um, to like the surrounding structures. I like to take a look at the osseous structures on multiple planes. Um, the coronals and saddles lay out well, the larger osseous structures, the incidentally imaged lower extremities, the pelvic ring, um, and then spine, and then kind of like the lower thoracic cage. And, and again, the spine in particular is laid out well in the sagittals. You can, you know, you can sometimes see spinal pathology um, as well. Um, we can go through this carefully. And then, and then particularly using the axials to problem solve or particularly to look at the lower ribs or subtle abnormality um, in the osseous structures. And then ultimately, once we've taken a look at the osseous structures, um, looking for abnormalities in the muscular tissue, subcutaneous fat, um, and then even sometimes the um, a cutaneous surface we will see, um, though that those will frequently be uh, seen clinically. But using multiple projections, though I particularly like the coronals and sagittals, which lay out much of the anatomy very well. Um, sometimes you will see like hernias or various other uh, kind of multispatial uh, things that affect, uh, uh, that affect kind of the planes that we generally normally expect of the abdominal wall um, on these various projections as well. Okay, um, so just to recap, you know, how do we approach the CT abdomen pelvis? Um, 
you know, from the beginning, like with all studies, we're going to get a sense of what's going on in the patient, get a sense of what they're, you know, concerned about, any sort of differential that you're heading into the study with, taking a look at priors, taking a look at the localizers for any sort of incidental seen only on those. And then we're going to be very careful looking at the lower chest, that there's various parts of the anatomy, including the vasculature, um, the heart, even like pericardium, and, as well as the lungs um, that we see. And then f finally making our way through the solid organs, GIGU tract, pelvic re reproductive organs, remember to look at the vessels inclusive of systemic, um, you know, the, the uh, ilocaval system, the portal system, looking at lymph nodes, peritoneal uh, structures, you know, looking for free air, looking for collections, looking for fluid, looking at other potential spaces in the abdomen and pelvis, and then finally at the kind of encasing or like a, the surrounding structures, the bones and soft tissues inclusive of musculature and the, the subcutaneous fat planes for any sort of, again, uh, focal lesions. And that basically kind of gives you a ba uh, an overview, and that sort of approach is one that you can kind of carry into cross-sectional anatomy that might include the abdomen and pelvis. Um, uh, you know, and that may include, say, the chest or other anatomy as well.